Hi, and welcome to our webinar, DNA API Best Practices. Um, this is the first of our webinar series, and we tend to build a full um, regular recurring webinar series out of this. So we really appreciate your involvement and participation, especially as we get into the Q&A section. We're going to be using the Q&A feedback uh, to drive future webinar topics. So anything that you guys have any questions about or anything, just feel free to let us know. So your hosts for today will be myself, Ryan Scott. I lead the, lead the technology of DNA behavior and Nikki Evans. Welcome, Nikki. Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate your introduction. Nikki leads the uh, training division of DNA. And we found that the training program has helped firms jumpstart their development with our API. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. But if you guys have any training specific questions, just make sure to put them into the chat box and Nikki can address them there. So our focus at DNA is helping individuals connect, customize, and power human interactions. The thing that gets us up in the morning that we all love is having conversations with people the first time, and that conversation works as if we've known them forever. And our passion is creating those types of connections for other people, both in person and digitally. And what we're going to be focusing on here is helping create those lasting, meaningful connections digitally using our API. Since 2001, we've launched many different apps ourselves, uh, financial DNA, business DNA, and communication DNA. And now we have an API so that you guys can leverage the backbone of those core apps that we've built for ourselves and use them for your own applications that you're designing in your business. So we often get asked, how can behavior be used in apps? So one interesting thing is if we look at specific case studies, there are very successful businesses that are around that have used personality assessments as the backbone of their system. And oftentimes it's not readily available or known on how they've done this because they build the user experience in such a way. So eHarmony is one of them. So wildly popular dating site, uh, their full backbone is all based on personality assessments. So whenever you're onboarding to eHarmony, uh, your dating matches are made based on personality fit and they have an algorithm that matches people together. Wellfront is another perfect example. So Wellfront is a robo advice platform. I happen to use it myself. Um, while you're going through the onboarding process with Wellfront, they have you take a risk assessment. Um, where they're analyzing your risk, propensity, and risk tolerance. Throughout the process of using their app, they reference your results quite often, and they make it very ingrained into the process and user experience of using Wellfront. So that's another great example of a firm that's done this. And there's virtually endless applications, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, ways that you can use personality in an app. Um, to make it better or what we call behaviorally smart. Um, there's a slide that will be coming up that has a bunch of different use cases to spark your imagination, but we always get two questions from clients whenever they're first starting the development process and trying to identify an app uh, that they want to build. The first question that I always get is, will clients actually complete a questionnaire whenever they're going through the process? And if you look at these two examples that I just gave, eHarmony and Wellfront, they both have done a great job of building the questionnaire into the onboarding process. So it's not an option, it's a requirement. And they make it fun and non-intrusive and very easy. So if we look at these two examples of companies that have done this successfully, and then as you design your own app and your own uh, framework for your business and user experience, those would be some good things to look back at as uh, you know, great examples. The other question that we're always getting is, can I just build my own assessment? It seems pretty simple that there's just questions and then results at the end. And it's quite time consuming and laborious to create your own assessment. Um, there are some you know, open source models out on the web that you can access that may get you, you know, half of the accuracy that we have or slightly better, but the thing that we've learned along the way is that if you intend, specific, particularly on building a business-to-business -business app, 
as soon as you get into the sales process, they're going to start asking for validation material. Um, so if you just got an open source questionnaire and you just put it into your application, just to pick up some basic personality attributes, it's not going to be validated. And then it's going to be a roadblock for getting some B2B clients. So one of the benefits of working with us in our API is that we make our validation reports and our team readily accessible to you. So if you ever get into a situation where a firm wants to do some validation and to uh, look behind the scenes into how it works, you can um, bring us in at that point and then we can help uh, you know, back up the process and the results that it has. So going on from that and a little bit about what we uncover in the process, the core of our API is powered by natural behavior. So with natural behavior, we're able to virtually uncover every motivation and drive that a, a human has. So we're uncovering everything that's below the surface on the iceberg picture on the left. So we can uncover things that you typically would not know about a person unless you're working with them for many, many months. Um, and then there's some examples that are written there, but to give you some others, it would be, um, we can pick up on human habits and the way that they work, the way that they invest, the way that they communicate, the way that they learn, the risk and the decisions that they make, and then how they use those attributes in order to drive everyday decisions that they're making in their lives. So in addition to everything that we've listed on the left, we have 64 personality uh, traits that we can uncover with our API, and then we're adding 36 more. So what we've been doing is um, as we work with firms, we will sit down and help them identify what they're trying to build and what insights that we offer can help achieve those goals. So, you know, an example could be um, risk. So if you have an advisor and a client and you would like to match them up based on a risk profile, that's a quite simple application because we have risk as already an attribute that we are measuring. So we would help ma match those two together. Um, we've been working on a recent project with a firm that is helping uh, with higher and career development with IT uh, individuals. And they're all interested in how individuals are able to adapt to changing technology. So that is a new insight that we have developed and that will be inv involved or included in the 36 new insights that we're uh, releasing this summer. So the overall accuracy of our platform is 91%. So if someone completes the questionnaire, uh, we can hit their personality spot on 90% of the time, 91% of the time and we can basically predict how they will operate in their work life and finances. Um, one key benefit of using a natural behavior assessment like ourselves um, that uses the forced choice model, which we won't go too much into today, but that is an underlying methodology that our system is built off of is called forced choice methodology. And that, uh, those results last a lifetime. So, you know, it, when you compare it to other platforms, a lot of the results only last for six months and ours, you don't have to have clients retake over time. So that's one of the other key benefits of using a stable known platform. That's not an open source tool. So as you work with DNA, there's two particular tracks that you can choose. So the first one is what we call DNA retail. So if you go to any of our websites, financial DNA, business DNA, or communication DNA.com, you can access the platform and have a turnkey solution out of the box. You can just buy it off of a credit card. Your account automatically gets set up based on the, the inputs that you provide. And you can start to use that today. Um, it's ideal if you want to leverage our insights, but you don't have your own technology or infrastructure or you really care to, to build out that. Um, the DNA retail tool, it's also a great way is if you hope to use our API in the future, you can start using the DNA retail tool today um, and start to get your feet wet on a very cost effective basis. So I, if you're interested in any of our tools, you can go check those out at those websites. And then if you are interested in building your own application, and if you have, um, you know, your own development resources or you plan to, and you want to leverage our insights to build your own application, the DNA API is a perfect fit for that. Um, so the DNA API is a separate track 
Um, it would be a separate account to your DNA retail account, and it would allow you to have uh, open access to all of the insights via API. So these are the three tools that we had just discussed, financial DNA, business DNA, and communication DNA. So all three of those tools offer uh, turnkey platforms that you can buy off the website. Um, again, I recommend if you're not familiar with our tools, um, that's a great way to get started and you can um, stop that platform and switch over to the DNA API at any point. And financial DNA is typically used for financial planning integration, business DNA for HR management, career development, hiring, things like that. And communication DNA is used for CRM integrations. Communication DNA, the, the personality insights that come out, out of that are how to sell to somebody, selling and marketing. So it's widely used by sales and marketing teams. Uh, the communication DNA API, we're in the process of building that out today. Um, if that's something that you're interested in, um, you can let us know and we can add you to the list. However, we do offer communication insights that come out of our platform if you use natural behavior, uh, which drives financial DNA and business DNA. So if you're interested in communication DNA, you can still reach out to us and then we can talk about ways that you can get started, even though that API is not available today. So Ryan, I think it's a great time to do a quick poll. Um, so I am about to launch the poll here just to get some uh, idea of what you're interested in. So if you as an audience can quickly uh, vote um, as soon as uh, everybody's got had a chance to vote on the poll, I will close that out. But we'll give you a couple of minutes here to just try to gauge your interest in and um, match up where you are. Looks like results are starting to come in. We'll give it another 30 seconds. We got a little over half of people responding. So if you haven't responded yet, I'm going to give you five more seconds and then we'll close out the poll here. All right. And so it looks like we've got a lot of people interested in both uh, financial and business insights and, and some folks interested specifically in business DNA. Um, one in financial DNA, a few of you, about half of you that answered are just exploring and some have already gotten started or are ready to start. And then it looks like we've got, again, about half of the group ready to, to do a beta or a pilot. Um, and then we're somewhere between a, a 100 and 10,000 users. So, um, Ryan, anything else that you wanted to do while I've got the poll up? No, I don't think so. Thanks, Nikki. Um, and like we said earlier, we're going to be using those resources to uh, drive future topics and also we'll address some of the key points to, um, you know, you that are just getting started and are interested in a beta program. Uh, we can address some of those in the question and answer point. Uh, Nikki and I had a few resources that we can drive you to to learn more about uh, how to get started on a beta uh, test basis. So this is how our, uh, the API works. So I'm gonna start left to right, and I'm gonna go to each different step and describe it, um, and then talk about what would be inside of your platform and what would reside on our platform. So starting all the way to the left, um, this is a questionnaire screen. So this would actually happen inside of your app. Um, so we actually would provide all the uh, assets that you would need in order to build the questionnaire inside of your application. So your participant would log into your own application and without leaving your application, they would answer all the natural behavior questions. So your developers would build our questionnaire into your platform. The next step, moving one step to the right, is that the answers are stored in your database and you would push the answers to DNA behavior. So essentially you can store the, the answers that you receive from the clients into your database and then you can push those answers to our system. Our system will then take those answers and respond back after we have analyzed them with insights. 
Um, it takes a, only a fraction of a second for us to analyze the results. So it's a very quick, seamless process. And as soon as you receive the insights back, which again, it takes like a fraction of a second, you can deliver those insights immediately on the screen to those clients. So you'll receive those insights. And if you, cho you choose to, you can show it up on a dashboard or trigger some internal workflow. On the right hand side, all the way on the far right, where the computer and the phone are, are some examples of how results can be shown to clients. So this is using our screens. So if you are currently using financial DNA or retail product, um, what's shown in the, the computer is what financial DNA will be looking like in the future. Um, that's our U, new user interface for investor clients. And then what you're seeing in the, uh, the phone is uh, a results dashboard for how the uh, results for business DNA could look like on the phone. So all of the insights are sent to you and then you can drive the experience. You can leverage our PDF reports, videos, graphics, and descriptions along with the behavioral assets in order to build your own experience. But the idea in this is that you would build something that's kind of completely new and you're solving a new uh, challenge that's out there in the industry. Um, and that's one thing that we really push a lot of our um, partners to do is, is start to solve new problems that aren't currently being uh, solved right now out in the marketplace. Um, if you're interested in building just another questionnaire platform that would be very similar to business DNA or financial DNA, um, we would have a lot of discussions with you on, uh, you know, just making it a unique experience because we've had a lot of firms in the past that um, will go down that route and they'll find that it's a very crowded space and we want you to be successful in this and we'll help you kind of build a new and unique um, experience that's solving com something completely new, just like Wealthfront has done and eHarmony has done. That's where we're seeing that the, the biggest impact on new behavioral apps can be made. So now we can go into some uh, specific uh, use cases for apps. Um, so up on the screen, we have three different columns. So it seems that many of you on the uh, webinar today are interested in financial DNA and business DNA applications. Those are going to be on the far left and in the middle column. Um, so these are things that you can use uh, personality insights in order to do. So the first, starting with the financial DNA um, applications would be advisor client matching. So this is quite uh, easy to do once you know what the personality styles of individuals are. Um, so we do all the heavy lifting as far as figuring out what a personality style is. And we also have an algorithm that will match people up um, that you could utilize in order to do that. Um, I personally see that that's a huge opportunity out there in the financial services space is having an app so that individuals can um, find an advisor that matches their needs and uh, personality style. Um, we can do things like uh, behavioral driven portfolios. We have a bunch of research data and uh, the API to drive behavioral driven portfolios similar to how Wealthfront is doing it. Um, and uh, intelligent robo advice. So we have risk taking, risk tolerance, and portfolio um, tools that can be used uh, inter intertwined in order to build that experience. Um, as a client, it uses a robo advice platform. We have a treasure trove of communication insights that can be used for sales and marketing. So as a client gets onboarded to a tool, you can then leverage the DNA that they took at the very first step and then start to build that experience around it. So what type of emails do they get? How does your team service them whenever they call in? All that can be driven from our API and all can be driven just on the results the client uh, received when they first completed the profile. Um, we can do goals-based planning. That's something that we actively do with financial DNA and we have all those uh, insights available for the API. Wealth mentoring and behavioral coaching. Um, so wealth mentoring to us and the way that we define that is helping an individual identify what their quality life goals are and helping map those goals to uh, you know, specific steps to help individuals achieve those goals. That's something that our API can do. Um, couple dynamics and family continuity. This is one of the passions of our CEO and something that we've included in the API is the ability of identifying individuals in a family um, so that, you know, if you have a family office or family practice, um, a unique experience can be provided. Um, compliance management. This is something that I worked on a huge bank project about a year ago. 
and um, they're using financial DNA from a compliance basis um, in addition to uh, making the relationship stronger between the advisors and the client. So because our tool is validated and the way that our API works and backs up all the data and provides um, insights and snapshots of a point in time as far as their financial DNA is concerned, it helps vastly with the compliance documentation process. Um, financial wellness is something that we've been working on um, more recently, and it's the combination of business DNA and financial DNA from our perspective. So helping an individual understand what their financial personality is, and then also helping them understand what decision approach and uh, career goals that they have in their life, using the business DNA tool set to help, um, help them achieve their goal, both from their income and expense uh, perspective. So then going to the middle column, those are all the business DNA tools. I'll just quickly go through them. So we have a recruiting and role fit. So we have a whole hiring platform that can be accessed through our API. Um, talent development, um, that's another aspect that we have specific insights in. Um, team performance, each individual in a team can be measured for their business DNA. And we have a lot of insights that um, report on how a team can work together, um, communicate what are their strengths, struggles, and challenges. Um, succession planning, so whenever you're planning um, the next phase for your business, um, this is something that business DNA is often used for and used in the marketplace today. Um, we have a whole team of coaches that use business DNA resources in order to help with the succession planning of a business. Corporate culture is something that we just inherently measure and can help um, achieve with business DNA. Operational risk. Um, we have quite a few blogs on this. Um, this is also one of the key interests of our uh, executive staff is helping identify um, operational risks in a business based on personality styles. Um, if that's something that you're interested in, you can let us know and we could send you some interesting blogs and how our API could be used. Leadership development. Um, we have worked uh, very closely with a firm in Atlanta called Leadership Freedom um, and they specialize in uh, leadership development using the business DNA tool set. Um, and they've also helped us build out several of our new tools that are also driven by our API in order to provide you le uh, leadership development tools and insights, um, as well as career development. So we also have an API that will provide career development insights. Um, and without going into too much detail on the far right hand side is the communication DNA applications. So as I mentioned earlier, communication DNA is all about sales and marketing insights. So as you can see, it's custom selling approaches, uh, custom marketing approaches and solution matching is really where those are um, coming from. So if you're interested in accessing our API, um, you can actually see what we have right now by just going to the website that I have on the screen. Um, and if you would like um, access to this uh, URL, you can just be, feel free to email us inquiries at dnabehavior.com and we can also provide these slides. Um, so to access our library currently is api.dnabehavior.biz. Um, so the 64 attributes are gonna be available in the second uh, API call that's listed on that page. So get assessment results that will provide 64 behavioral attributes as well as um, many other specialized API calls. And as I mentioned earlier, we will be providing 36 additional insights this summer. Um, so the resources that are available on this website are um, all the available calls, a get started guide, some sample code so your developers can go and take a look as well as use cases and how to interpret the data that we are sending back. So as we discussed, um, building the questionnaire experience in your system is a key aspect. And this is really how, why I see that e, uh, eHarmony and Wealthfront have been so successful with the build out of their systems as the user experience. Um, so over here on the right, we have some tips and tricks in order to build a good questionnaire experience on your platform. So we will provide you the questionnaire uh, IP and best practices once you sign up for our API. And you can choose between desktop, mobile, or both as you build out the questionnaire experience. The way that it works over on the left-hand side, we have a mock-up of um, a new questionnaire platform that we're playing around with that allows individuals to click and drag the responses into the boxes. So one of our um, key drivers in building 
good user experiences is reducing the time to, com to complete the profile and make it more user friendly and um, non intrusive for individuals to take. So on the left hand side, you can see that this is an example of where someone would pick up the available questionnaire options, choose one most and one least like option. And if you can see in the bottom um, yellow bar, there's some feedback that is provided um, on how the client is completing the, the profile. So you can see here it says you're slightly slower than the average. If someone is um, you know, on par with the average or competing or completing the profile above average completion time, we'll provide a positive feedback in order to uh, have them just maintain that same speed. So I often get asked, we work a lot with uh, startup firms and we often get asked, what are the recommended development process steps and where do we fit into that? Um, so here you can see many different stages of development. So this is the process that we follow internally and I would recommend if you're just getting started. If you're at a larger firm, um, you, know, you may have more established agile or project management uh, processes and you can just certainly follow those. But if you're just keeping a pretty simple approach, everything would start with an idea, which it sounds like many of you are at right now. So just trying to identify what business problem are you solving with behavioral insights is really what you need to do with the first step. Um, the next step is something that we um, focus on a lot at DNA is that we have a lot of ideas because we have very creative staff, um, but we try to very quickly go to what, what is called the MVP planning. So MVP and product planning is uh, designing a minimal viable product that will get you started and will help individuals solve their business problem. So it's what is the absolute minimum thing that is required in order to solve a business problem. And then you can always have a roadmap to build on features beyond that, but just starting with that very simple minimal thing so that you can quickly just get some feedback for, from some test users is really important. Um, we typically fall into the MVP stage. So as you are coming up with that minimal viable product, um, that is where you would access the DNA API. Um, you often don't need our API in the idea stage because you, know, you have an idea of what uh, DNA is and that the questionnaire will fit into the process. But as you design the MVP is where we would fit in. Um, and we have um, some quick start um, guides that would allow you to um, jumpstart your application development. So if you don't want to build out a full dashboard that has the results right now, you can leverage our PDF reports and just provide someone a report at the end um, just to speed up development so that you can work on your core features without having to work on the DNA development um, within your app. Um, after you come up with the MVP planning, you would then have a UX design. Uh, so coming up with a user-friendly approach of achieving your MVP is what you would focus on there. Then you would focus on logistics, who will build it, and when will they start, how long will it take. Um, and then you will use, or we recommend that you use the agile development process to build, test, and repeat. So that's very quickly uh, building, testing a process, and using a sprint format so that you can quickly um, make improvements to your products um, to get some quick wins um, you know, on a two week or a four week rollout. So here's an outline of ways to get started. Um, so we have two different API products. So if you now have decided that it, uh, the API product is something that you're interested in, um, you would then choose, do you want, do you fit more into the enterprise category, which is a custom API solution that's catered to your firm's needs. Um, this is often gonna be in the, the bigger category of like 10,000 plus participants per year. And it would typically be a large financial services firm or uh, you know, a startup with hopes of becoming that very, very quickly. Um, it doesn't seem like we have um, any of those that are on this call right now. It seems like most of you will be mostly interested in the DNA API incubator product is what we call it. So we actually have a preferred pricing program that's specific for small firms that are interested in beta, start, uh, beta testing and are more startup in size. We have preferred pricing resources and tools that are specifically built for startups. Um, and we will have our next APR uh, webinar will, will be catered to the API candidates. So if you have any questions on um, you know, what's involved in that 
or what the program requirements are, just feel free to let us know in the questions and we will address that in a moment uh, whenever we get to the question slide. So from that, uh, does anybody have any questions? From a logistic standpoint, you can either raise your hand and I can unmute you, or you can type a question into the question box on your screen. We can take questions either way. So I'll ask a question to all of you. Was this helpful? Was this what you expected? Um, what are you most interested in hearing about next? I think we've stunned everybody, Ryan. We do have a question. Um, so uh, Ryan, we've got a question here. If, um, if I wanted to get started, what's the best approach? Should I hire an outside consultant? Right, so it kind of all depends on what your firm size is. So I'm assuming that this would be um, one individual that has an idea and they're um, interested in um, building it out, but they don't really know how, where to get started and they also don't have their own development resources. In that case, I would say um, reach out to our team. Um, so we are aware of a few firms that could help um, you get started. Um, and also you can find out a little bit more information from us on what you would need to address in the discussion with those consultants if you did end up getting hiring one. So um, in that process, what that typically would look like is that the first question that the consultant is gonna ask is, well, what are you trying to build? Um, so the way that we can help in that process is uh, by providing the API documentation and then that will clearly outline to them exactly what's going to be involved so that they can provide you a quote. Um, I think that that would be good. So just don't be shy to reach out to us and we, we're always happy to help um, even if you're not yet a customer uh, on, you know, just steps to get started so that, you know, you don't feel lost in the process. Great. Thanks. Looks Ryan. like we have one more question on just what the requirements are for the DNA incubator program. So I'll just quickly discuss that. So we have a brochure that uh, outlines all of that. Um, but if you're a small business, you're likely are going to, uh, you know, fit in the requirements for that. Um, so in order to apply for the DNA incubator program, you just need to have an idea for an app and are actively engaged in the development of that. Be a privately held business in less than, uh, in, in business for less than three years and less than $1 million in annual revenue. Um, so we worked, uh, when we, as we designed this program, we specifically designed it so it would fit well within the confines that Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure require. So if you um, apply and get accepted to our uh, DNA incubator program, you also will be um, it, uh, approved um, to Microsoft Spark program or Amazon Web Services startup program. They both offer startup resources. So we designed this so that you could sign up for the DNA API, and you also can get um, you know, all of your infrastructure set up through Amazon Web Services or Microsoft so that you'll be able to cut all of those costs for the first year, which we know really helps out businesses. So if you have any questions about that, just reach out to anybody on our team and I'll flash up our contact information on the next slide. And that way you can uh, just get with us and we can provide a the brochure that has specific information on how to apply. So our email address is inquiries at dnabehavior.com and then flash up on the screen is also our phone number. And then obviously you can go to our website as well if you wish to contact us. So without further ado, we really appreciate you all taking the time to join us in this webinar today. Um, and as we mentioned, we will be hosting our next webinar will be on the API incubator program. 
So um, feel free to attend that. You will be receiving an email from us as an invite for that next program. And then following that are gonna be some specific API driven uh, webinars that will, you know, we're gonna do some um, open office hours so that you can ask us questions and we can work on specific use cases, as well as getting to more advanced topics in uh, API development and going through some specific projects that we've done in the past. So we really appreciate you joining and thank you again. Thanks everybody.